In Matthew chapter 15, on verses 8 and 9, the Lord Jesus Christ quotes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13, and says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. Uh, a person may say of something or someone that they love something or someone with all their heart. Uh, a book may be written or a piece of music may be written and people read it and listen to it and they, they may say, oh, the, the person who's written that has written it from the heart. And true Christianity is a matter of the heart. The, the Lord Jesus Christ often spoke about this, about how true Christianity is a matter of the heart in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37, he said that the, the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. In the Sermon on the Mount, when he described the, the, the Christian life, he, he said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, blessed are the pure in Heart, for they will see God. In, still in the Sermon on the Mount, in chapter 6 and verse 21, Jesus said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In chapter 12 and in verse 34, Jesus said that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. In chapter 13, in verse 19, the parable of the sower, he talks about the, the seed that falls on the, on the path. He says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. And we, we all understand that when the Lord Jesus Christ talks about the heart in, in these verses, he, he's not talking about the, the physical organ that, that pumps blood around the body. But the heart here is where our, our thoughts and our desires come from, that the heart is, is what loves and what hates. When the Bible talks about the heart, it's talking about who we really are. It's talking about what makes us tick. And true Christianity is a matter of the, the heart. And in these words, in Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9, taken from Isaiah chapter 29, Jesus Christ talks about the heart. And he says in these verses that if the heart is not right with God, then we are not right with God. No matter how good the, the rest of our lives may appear to be. There were people in Isaiah's day. And there were people in Jesus' day. And there are people in our day who honour God with their lips and go through the motions of, of worshipping God. But their hearts far from him. Jesus said of those people of his day, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. And these are very searching words then that cause us all to examine our hearts and ensure that we're not just honoring God with our lips but that we, we love him and worship him with our hearts. So as we think about these words together this morning, let, let's begin by thinking about why 
Jesus spoke here about the importance of the heart? What, what led Jesus to, to quote these words from the book of Isaiah at this particular point in his ministry? Well, as we saw earlier on with, with the children, some Pharisees and teachers of the law, of verses 1 and 2, complained that Jesus' disciples broke some of their traditions by failing to wash their hands before they ate food. And what the Pharisees were saying here, it, it was more than just what parents say to their children, you know, don't be for, forget to wash your hands before dinner. It, this went deeper than that. As, as part of the Old Testament law, the priests were required to wash their hands and their feet before they began their ceremonial duties. And the Pharisees extended that to everybody else. And they made it a rule for everybody to follow. And the Pharisees turned the, the washing of hands before food into a religious matter. Into something that would make them pleasing to God. And, and straight away this takes us to the, the great problem with the Pharisees. Everything was about what they did. Everything was about how they looked. Everything was about what they were like on the, on the outside. We, we wash our hands before we eat. How, how clean we are. How religious we are. How good we are. And we have all of these other rules as well that we've added to God's law. And, and we keep these rules. And God must surely be pleased with us. They added so many of their own rules and traditions to God's law that they missed the real point of God's law. Uh, and Jesus pointed this out to them in verses 3 to 6 where he told the Pharisees that they were so taken up with following their rules and traditions that they, they failed to keep one of the Ten Commandments. They failed to honour their father and their mother. The Pharisees had lots of Rules and regulations that they followed and made other people follow. And as they did these things, they, they honoured God with their lips. And they went through the acts of worship. But it was all empty. It was all in vain. Because Jesus says, their hearts are far from me. For all their outward religion. These Pharisees and teachers of the law did not, did not love God with their hearts. So that's why Jesus spoke here at this point, on this occasion, about the importance of the heart. Let, let's think secondly then about what Jesus said about the importance of the heart. And he began by talking to the Pharisees and he, he quoted this verse from Isaiah to the Pharisees but what he was saying was so important that we're told in verse 10 that he, he called the, the crowd to him but more, more people needed to hear what he was saying and in verse 10 he called the crowd to him and said listen and, and understand and when Jesus Christ God's son says to us listen and understand then we need to make sure that we listen and that we understand. And he told the crowd in verse 11 that it's, it's not what goes into people that makes them unclean, but, but what comes out of them. What goes into a man's mouth does not make him unclean, but what comes out of his mouth, that is what makes him unclean. And then in verse 15, Peter on behalf of the disciples, asked Jesus to, to explain this to them. And so Jesus did explain and said in verse 16, Are you still so dull? Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these make a man unclean. For out of the heart 
come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, slander, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. The, the, the Pharisees were getting worked up because the disciples ate without washing their hands. That, that makes the disciples unclean, the Pharisees thought. And Jesus said, no, the, the, the Pharisees had it all wrong. Eating, eating with unwashed hands, it might not be the best thing to do, but it doesn't make somebody unclean before God. No, Jesus said, the things that make people unclean before God are, are their sinful hearts and, and the sins that come out of those hearts. That's the, the great problem. And that's where the Pharisees had it all wrong. They thought they could make themselves right with God by cleaning the outside. And they failed to see that the great problem was the sinfulness of, of the heart. You know, so, some people, be, before they eat an apple, they rub it on their trousers or they, they, they rub it on their, on their sleeve, give it a nice shine, get rid of anything unpleasant that might be on the, on the surface. You, know, you can rub an apple on your sleeve or on your trousers all you like. You, make, you can make it as shiny as you can make it. But if that apple is rotten at its core, it's not going to taste nice. It's not going to do you any good, no matter how shiny you've made it on the outside. And, and that's what the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were doing. They, they were washing their hands and they were doing this and that and the other. And they were making themselves shiny at, on the outside. And they failed to see that they were rotten at the core. That they had sinful hearts. And from these sinful hearts came sinful actions. And the same is true for us. We, we, we cannot make ourselves right with God. We, we, we cannot save ourselves from hell. We, we cannot get ourselves from, to heaven by, by cleaning up the outside. By washing our hands and following whatever rules and regulations we, we may choose to follow. There's a deeper problem that needs to be dealt with. The problem of our sinful hearts and the, the things that flow out of those hearts. Why, why do we do the sinful things that we do? Why, why do we say the, the sinful things that we say? Why do we think the sinful things that we think? Why do we desire the, the sinful things that we desire? It's because we have sinful hearts. We can spend all of our time, all of our lives, polishing the outside, washing our hands, turning over a new leaf, saying our prayers, giving to charity. And all of those things may be good things to do. But they don't touch the heart. They don't change our hearts. They, 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 they don't deal with our biggest problem. We can worship God. We can come to church. We, we, we can honor God with our lips. But it makes no difference if our hearts are far from him. Jesus said of these Pharisees and teachers of the law, they honor me with their lips, yes, but their hearts are far from me. And this is what makes the grace of God such good news. That God in his grace comes to people and he changes their hearts. God gives to people new hearts. One of the great gospel promises found in the Old Testament is found in the book of Ezekiel in chapter 36 and the Lord says in Ezekiel 36 and verse 26 I will give you a new heart 
and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. The, the, the grace of God goes to the, the heart of the problem. The grace of God goes to the heart. And when God gives a person a new heart, then with that heart they, they love God. With that heart, they trust God. With that heart, they repent of their sin. With that heart, they, they put their faith in, in Jesus Christ. With that heart, they, they love God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With that heart, they rejoice in the work of Jesus Christ and his death upon the cross. And from that heart that loves God begins to flow a life of joyful obedience to God's law. So that promise again in Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Our washing of our hands and doing this, that and the other, it can't deal with the problem of our, our sinful hearts. But God, in his grace, comes to sinful people and, and gives them new hearts. Hearts to, to love him. Hearts that are clean. And having thought then about why Jesus Christ spoke here about the importance of the heart, and what he said about the importance of the heart, let's notice thirdly somebody then who, who shows us the, the beauty of a, a Christian heart. Somebody who shows us the beauty of a, a Christian heart. Uh, both Matthew and Mark in their Gospels record this, this teaching that the Jesus gave about the, the heart. And in both Matthew and, and Mark, we, we read of the, the same event taking place soon after Jesus gave that teaching. So in verse 21, that, that Jesus went to the region of Tyre and Sidon and a, a Canaanite woman from the area came to him. She was not a, a religious Jew like these Pharisees and teachers of the law. But she understood more than they did. This woman, she came to Jesus in great concern over her daughter who was suffering from demon possession. And she came to Jesus, we're told in verse 22, crying out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. She referred to Jesus as Lord, Son of David, even though she was not from Israel. She could see that Jesus was the, the promised King and Savior, come from the family of David, King of Israel. She called him Lord. She asked him for mercy. The, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, that they thought they were so good. Look at us washing our hands before we eat. Aren't, aren't we good? But this woman who came to Jesus, she, she didn't ask him to help her be, because she was good. She asked him to help her because, because he was merciful. And Jesus seemed to reply harshly to her at first. He didn't answer her at all. And then when he did answer her, he said he was sent to, to the Israelites. But she kept on asking for help. And, and then he said to her, it's not right to take the, the children's bread and, and toss it to their dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that the fall from their master's table. Will you not just give me some crumbs? <coughs> See, Jesus wasn't dealing harshly with her. But he was graciously drawing out of her what she really believed. He was graciously opening up her heart. And it became clear that our heart was full of love for him, full of trust in him. The hearts of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were far from him. They, they did not love him. 
Oh, but this woman's heart was close to him and loved him and trusted him. This woman, she had a new heart. She had a, a Christian heart. She had a heart that would not let Jesus go, but kept on trusting him, kept on asking him for help. Jesus said to the Pharisees, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. But he, he didn't say that of this woman. Because her heart was full of, of love for him. Let's, let's think about, about all of this then, in, in relation to, to different kinds of, of people. Perhaps different kinds of people who who may be here this morning. Well, what does all of this mean to those who are unconcerned about their hearts? No, ho hopefully, the fact that you are here in church this morning means that you, you are concerned about your heart. But it's possible that some, some here this morning may be here simply out of a sense of routine or out of a sense of duty. It's possible that some of you may, may have been brought here. Perhaps your parents have brought you here and you, you don't really want to come. You don't really want to, to be in church. And you're not really concerned about the condition of your, your heart. You're, you're not really interested in, in these things. Do you think that's wise? We were praying earlier, weren't we? For somebody who is having heart surgery tomorrow. And if, you, if you go to the, the doctors and the doctor tells you that there's a problem with your heart physically, that your heart's unhealthy and dangerous, that, that would be a wake-up call to you, wouldn't it? You, you would start to think seriously about your heart about the things you're eating, about the, the amount of exercise you're doing. Or will you not think seriously about, about your heart in this way, spiritually? Will you take seriously what Jesus says about the, the heart, that your, your greatest problem is that you have a sinful heart? And from that sinful heart comes sinful things. And you cannot know God. You, you cannot be right with God. You cannot go to heaven and, until that heart is dealt with. Until that heart is changed, washed clean. Will you not think about your, your heart, the, the, the need of your heart? But then perhaps you are concerned about your heart. But perhaps you're trying to deal with that problem in the same way that the Pharisees did. Maybe you can see that you're, you're not right with God. That, that you need to be forgiven. That, that you need to be washed clean. You need to be saved from the wrath to come. You, you, you can see that. And so you're busy trying to wash your hands <laughs> You're, you're busy trying to, to do this and to do that and to do the other and, and to make yourself clean and, and, and respectable and, and acceptable to God. You're, you're busy polishing the, the, the skin of the apple. When the problem is that you need a clean heart. Don't trust in the, the outward things that you do or don't do. But turn to God. Turn to, to Jesus Christ. Trust in Jesus Christ who died on the cross to, to deal with sin. But what, what about those of us who have? new hearts God has taken away our hearts of stone and given us hearts of flesh 
How do we, how do we respond to that? Well, that's a series of sermons in itself, but how thankful we should be. How thankful we should be that God has come to us and God has touched our hearts, changed our hearts, given us new hearts, clean hearts. That he's not left us in our, our sinful state, but has come to us and, and saved us by his grace. And how we should love God with those hearts. And if God has given us new hearts, then it's surely a serious thing, a serious sin for us to neglect those hearts. For us to allow those hearts to to grow cold. For us to allow those hearts to to drift from God. The wise man in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 4, says, Above all else, guard your heart. For it is the wellspring of life. God has given us new hearts. We we need to guard those hearts, protect those hearts, keep those hearts healthy. And how do we do that? Well, there are many answers to that question, but, but let's just notice the example of this woman that we've already touched upon. She came to Jesus Christ and she sought Jesus Christ with all her heart. And she kept on seeking him. Her heart was fixed upon him and her heart would not let him go. And let us fix our eyes and fix our hearts upon Jesus Christ. And not let him go. And let's pray that the Holy Spirit will fill our hearts with more love for God, with more love for God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit will fill our hearts with more joy at Jesus Christ and all that he has done for us. And that from those hearts will flow lives of love and and obedience to God. Let's pray the prayer that we're taught to pray later on in the New Testament. We've had a little break, but we'll shortly in our evening services be returning to our series in in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. You think that great prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 3. I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We pray that Christ will dwell in our hearts through faith and that in our hearts we'll know the love of Christ and that our hearts will then be full of love for Christ.